Well, good morning, church. Good morning. Glory to God. What a wonderful day it is. Our reading for today in the New Testament, you know, we just closed out Exodus. 39 and 40 in Exodus today, and then the New Testament, 24, 1 to 22. Morning, Jake. You okay? Yeah. We got sick people in our church. We pray for them. But we believe in healing in our church, too. We don't believe people get cancer and just wait to die. We see a lot of people through my ministry, people get cancer. Doctors give it up on them and the Lord heal them, clear it all up. What kind of Christian are you? Just one that believes the Bible, amen. <laughs> I just Bible believing Christian. <laughs> Matthew 24. Let's talk with my grandson, Andrew, my best buddy. I like him a lot. He's with his girlfriend. Nice girl. I like the girl a lot. My wife led her to Christ. Uh, trying to get him in the Bible. I try to get everybody in the Bible. I'm going to get you in the Bible. You know what the trouble is with most of the people sitting here in church this morning? You don't read enough Bible. Now be honest. Be honest. Just admit it. I don't read as much of the Bible as I should. Just raise your, raise your hand. But I'm going to tell you something. I read it hours and hours a day. Listen to it through the night. Sometimes get up in the night and just read it. And you know what? I don't read it enough. I'm a one book man, the Bible. It's its own dictionary. It's its own commentary. The writer of it is the teacher of it, Holy Ghost, <laughs> and our blessed Savior and the Heavenly Father. You know what one of them do, the all three do together. All the time, they do everything together, all the time, all the time. Blessed Trinity, amen? Yeah. First John, I read it every night before I go to bed. Starts out in chapter 1. You can have fellowship with us. And truly our fellowship is with the Father and with the Son. Glory to God. <laughs> You're working on that. You didn't need to keep your memorization going, jo and you, Joanne. You're slacking off, girl. Well, I will admit I haven't been doing it as much as I should. Because I've almost got first Don't give me no excuses. Get memorizing. Others of you ought to memorize, too. How many of you know you ain't memorizing the Bible like you should? And I ain't either. And I can't write it off that I'm old. Some of us need to get saved, amen? <laughs> Glory. 24, 1 to 22. And Jesus went out and departed from the temple. You know... There ain't no temple no more. There is a temple. There ain't a temple, but there is a temple. Do you hear what I said? You know, the first temple was magnificent. You know, when they built the second temple, the young man praised and the old man cried. <laughs> you know why the old men were crying? Because they knew the original temple. The second temple was nothing like the first. And the young men hollered. The old men cried. But glory! Do I have a temple now? 
Hallelujah. You know where the temple is now? I'm the temple. I'm the temple. Well, glory. Isn't it good when we can meet like this in a New Testament church and have a bunch of temples get together and encourage each other? Amen. Amen. Not have to worry about shining the gold or anything. <laughs> Hallelujah. And Jesus went out and departed from the temple. I'm never going to depart from this temple. I'm the temple of the Holy Ghost. How about you? Anybody else here temple of the Holy Ghost? I hope you get it if you don't get it. You might have it and not know it, but I hope you learn it today. And his disciples came to him for to shew him the buildings of the temple. And Jesus said unto them, See ye not all these things? Verily I say to you, there shall not be left here one stone upon another that shall not be torn down. Two temples torn down. There ain't going to be no more temple. They can say, a lot of these false teachers teach about some temple. There ain't, no, ain't going to be no temple. All we're going to need in heaven is, is the light. <laughs> and as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately saying tell us when shall these things be and what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world listen up now folks hope you followed me we're in Matthew 24 verse 3 and Jesus answered and said unto them take heed that no man deceive you you see there's a lot of deceivers they're on the television. They're in the churches preaching today. Here and around the world. Deceivers. Satan himself shall come as an angel of light. How much more his ministers, Satan's, as ministers of righteousness. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. Got them all around this city today. Ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled. You know, Christians are never supposed to be troubled. We ain't supposed to fear. We're to trust. For all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation shall rise against nation. It's been happening all down the years, you understand. And kingdom against kingdom. And there shall be famines, which there has been, and pestilence. That's when bugs get you. And earthquakes, we've had that, and diverse places. And all things, and these things are the beginning of sorrows. Beginning of sorrows. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted. That's been going on for many years when true Christians have been delivered up to be imprisoned and beaten. And sometimes they'll put you on a rack and keep screwing that uh, rack till they tear you in half. That's what they do. So nasty people. Catholics. Catholics. And shall kill you. And ye shall be hated. Of all nations. I'm hated by a lot of folks. That's part of the ball game folks. If ain't nobody hates you. You probably ain't even a Christian. <laughs> and then shall many be offended. And shall betray one another and shall hate one another. That's the ones that I see all over these 50 years I've been preaching. Uh, it says that he went out from us because they were not of us. If they'd have been of us, they'd have stayed with us. But they went out because they were not of us. They weren't real Christians, you see. And many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive many. I've had people used to fellowship with me. They've gone out and you know what they are now? False prophets. I could name me a bunch of them. I ain't going to do it right now. I could. And I ain't ashamed to do it either. And because iniquity shall abound, and love of many shall wax cold. But he that shall endure <clears throat> unto the end, the same shall be saved. Now I'm going to tell you something. 
Real saved people, they endure to the end. You're never going to turn on your Lord. You're going to endure to the end. It's called, in theological terms, it's called the perseverance of the saints. Real Christians, they stay on, faithful. Yeah. Yeah, you see, that's work. No, that, that ain't work salvation. That's real salvation. It says, they that are, but they, but he that shall endure until the end, the same shall be saved. So if you're really saved, you're going to make it. You know, I got a lot of friends that I work with in the ministry. Some of them have backslid sometime. Some some in the room right now. I ain't going to name nobody. But you know what? They come back. And they endure to the end. They get off track a little bit. But they come back. Amen? Well, glory. He that endures to the end should be saved. There ain't nobody that walked away from God did not return before their death. They ain't saved. They're going to split hell wide open. And people tell me about them. They say, uh, oh, no, they're okay because they did this or that. They didn't endure to the end. They're going to hell. You say, I don't believe that. I'm, crazy. I'm just telling you this is what the Bible says. He that endured to the end shall be saved. Even if they're put on a rack and get torn in half, torn apart, or they pour special oil on them. You get the slow burn. So they can be burning and dying like that. Watching the skin fall off. The, that's a lousy devil's Catholics. They're the ones made that oil, you know, to burn people. Yeah, that's what they've done. But he that shall endure to the end, the same shall be saved. People get out of true Christianity, they don't believe it, they don't follow it. They get into this, what I call, uh, uh, social club Christianity, or uh, like, the churches today, a lot of them are like the Elks Club, or like the Masons, kind of cult. They ain't, they ain't church. You know what they do? They tell you, you know what they tell you? You watch them on television. They get big crowds ready too. There's something good in you, and we're going to show you what it is. No, there ain't nothing good in you, and you, 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 you're wicked. You got a wicked heart. You need to repent. You know, they laugh at me. They, they, they laugh at my altars inside and outside. Kneel and pray, repent today. They laugh at that. I don't need that. Oh, yeah? If you don't, you're going to hell. I said, if you don't need repentance, you're going to hell. You Pharisee. God help you, wicked soul. Glory. And when therefore shall see the abomination of desolations spoken of by Daniel the prophet, sent whose read it, let him understand. Then let them which be in Judea flee to... Now, this is talking about... You might not agree with me, but the abomination of desolation is a great tribulation. You can agree with me or not. I don't care if you do or not. That's what I believe it is. The abomination of desolation is a great tribulation. Let's go on. Then let them which are in Judah flee unto the mountains. Let him which is on the housetop not come down to take anything out of his house. Neither let him which is in the field return back to take his clothes. And woe unto them that are with child, and to them that give suck in those days. But pray ye that your flight be not in the winter, neither on the Sabbath day. For then shall be great, here it is, verse 21, for then shall be great tribulation. Go be seven years of it. The first three and a half years going to be bad. The next three and a half years is going to be terrible. I showed it. Mike and I watched it the other day here. I'll put it on today again. I'll show animated characters 
and it, it it takes about an hour and a half to watch it. I'll put it on here. You can stay and watch it if you want. I'll watch it over and over. Sometimes I get it in the middle of the night, just put it on and watch it. And it, and it reads the, the book of Revelation. Shows all them monsters. Shows all them Jezebel. I, the funniest ones in there is the Jezebels they got running around. I laugh. I laugh. <laughs> Glory to God. Ah, for then shall be great tribulation, such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time, nor ever shall be. You say whatever you want. That's the great tribulation. And you know what? I'm going to be out of here. I ain't going to be in it. I got some of these preachers tell me now, well, Pastor Brother Varga, I used to be a pre-tribulation rapture, but I'm a mid-tribulation. I shut up. The Bible says, we that are here shall be caught up to be with the Lord. Who have you ever been with the Lord? First Thessalonians. You know, Thessalonians, they thought they was in the tribulation. Paul had to tell them, no, this ain't nothing. And you watch it. You hang around watch that thing today after you eat. You see them weird monsters and God killing people with the sword out of his mouth and the blood going up to the bridle of the horse in the valley of Megiddo. Yeah. And we're going to be riding along on white horses in white robes, doing nothing but watching our Savior slaughter them and the buzzards coming and eating them. You can watch it on it. It's cartoons. I love it. I remember when some of my relatives laughed at me and mocked me because I played that. They didn't like it. They didn't like the cartoon of Jesus with the burning red eyes. Now, I didn't agree with his long hair. Jesus ain't never had long hair because it's a shame for a man to have long hair. A couple of you guys need to get a haircut, too. Philip said he's going he to get a haircut. Gary needs a haircut. Mike needs a haircut. Mike needs a haircut. What's the matter with you, man? I'll, I'll buy you a haircut. You look like a girl in the back. No, you don't look like a girl. There ain't no way you can look like a girl. You got too much man about you. But you got to get them golden locks in the back cut off, son. And except those days should be shortened. There should no flesh be saved. Great tribulation. We all believe that. I don't care what you believe. This is what the Bible says. I was reading the Bible. Yeah. That's what it is. <laughs> Abomination of desolation spoken of of Daniel the prophet. Then if any man shall say unto you, Lo, here is Christ, or there believe it not. For there shall arise false Christs and false prophets. We got them today. Have had them for years. And shall shew great signs and wonders. In so much, if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. Now I've got people today that I believe that are saved, but they're fooled by false prophets today. And they say I'm too hard on them. No, I just got to figure it out. You got people that are telling people they're okay and you're going to bring the good out of them and they don't have to repent. That's a false prophet. Guarantee you 100%. That's a false prophet. Glory. Yeah, it is. I'll call them out. By name. Behold, I have told you before. I, I went past my end. Verse 22. And except those days shall be shortened, there should no flesh be saved but the elect's sake. Those days shall be short. It's going to be seven years tribulation. Well, I want to, I want to go read Doctor Big Bridge's commentary on that and see what he says. I tell Doctor Big Bridge's to go on down the road. Just give me the King James Bible and let it interpret itself. Go back to the Book of Daniel. It'll tell you about what's coming, or. Usually it explains it right nearby. It's at a fifth grade reading level. 
You know what the New King James Bible is that they put out to make it easier? It's at a six and a half grade. So the, 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 new, the New King James, they say that they made it to be easier to read is harder to read than the King James. You know what? They're liars. They're liars. That New King James Bible's got 5,200 and some changes in it. You go on YouTube, look up Gail Ripplinger, see what she has to say about these New Age Bibles. These Luc She calls them New Age Bibles, Luciferian Bibles. That's what they are. Luciferian. You know what? I'm free as a bird, man. If Christ will make you free, you're free indeed. I don't care about the false teachers. I don't care about the naysayers. I don't care about people trying to tarnish my name. I only want to worry about being right with this God. Have a million of them false teachers. I don't care what they say. If God be for me, who's going to be against me? Amen. <laughs> I'm so free. I got so much joy. I can't I can't express it to you. I have not words or paragraphs or any way of expressing it to you, only telling you, I got it. I got it. You need it if you don't. And if you don't have it, you know you don't have it. But you can get it. Because the Holy Ghost power is available for anybody that wants it. You just repent. Get right with God. Amen. Amen. God is so good. Hallelujah. I'm so joyful. It's unbelievable. I feel so good today, right now. I can't imagine what it's going to be like to be in heaven. But it's going to be better. It's going to be a thousand times better. But all I, all I know is what I can experience now. But with my glorified body, with my heavenly Father, with my Savior, with the Holy Ghost, it's going to be better. Why don't you get in tune with God, church? Why don't you get saved? YouTube, Internet, Facebook. Heavenly Father, thank you. Wonderful scriptures. 24 Matthew, 1 to 22. Great tribulation. Desolation, abomination, told about in Daniel. Help us, Lord. Save that sinner near as hell. The Holy Ghost is convicting you now like it did me April 4th, 1969. Repent now. Repent now. Pray this prayer with me. Dear Lord Jesus, I believe you died for me, shedding your precious blood on Calvary's cross and rising from the grave on the third day. The best I know how with an honest heart, I turn from my sins, receive you as my Savior. Thank you for saving me. Right now, Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Don't forget tonight, 6 o'clock, prayer time. I've got out there in the old sign. This church will be known as a house of prayer. We'll be having prayer tonight at 6. We'll be having prayer Wednesday at 6. And hopefully, as God moves, we'll be having it every day. Amen. Every day. Morning, noon, and night. I've read of revivals in the Bible and in Christian history. We need the flood tide to break through. Lord, said the old time power, Pentecostal word. power, thy floodgates of heaven pour open on us 
I forget the words. Lord, send the old time power, Pentecostal power, that sinners be converted and thy name glorified. Hallelujah.